this video, I'll be showing you the procedure in uh, conducting a sieve analysis. So what really is a sieve analysis is just uh, physically separating a soil sample into fractions of the same size using standard sieves. So here's a picture of um, sample uh, sieves of different hole diameters. So we can see here that it actually has uh, larger holes compared to other sieves. And this one is a picture of um, uh, soil fractions of different grain sizes. So I think uh, this uh, grain size corresponds to the fraction of soil that's, it's, that's uh, retained in the sieve uh, during the sieving process. And I will be discussing the procedure here. So first, you have to oven dry the sample. So before, by the way, before oven drying the sample, uh, you might be wondering um, about the sample size. Now, so the proper sample size or how many kilos do I have to put in the sieve for uh, sieve analysis. So here's a guide for you. So the US ACE or the US uh, Army Corps of Civil Engineers, you have the US ACE Army Corps of Civil Engineers, uh, gives this uh, table as a guide in preparing your samples for sieve analysis depending on the maximum particle size of your soil sample. So for example, if your soil sample is somehow like uh, dominantly gravel, so that's number four corresponding to 0.75 of your um, in millimeters of the diameter of the holes. So you can have a minimum sample size of 200 grams. You can have 300 grams, 400 or 500 grams as long as it does not go uh, lighter than 200 grams. So if you've selected the sample size, uh, the first that you have to do is to oven dry the sample. So make sure that um, you have an oven available in your laboratory. And Ash2 recommends a, an oven that's capable of maintaining at least 110 plus uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius of temperature no? uh, for your oven. But if you don't have uh, any oven available, you can um, dry the sample using fire. No? So just as long as uh, that the sample is dried before weighing. Okay, so next step is to weigh the dried uh, soil sample. You can make use of any uh, measuring devices that can measure weight. And, so, and uh, it's also recommended that we um, record the weight uh, with uh, uh, two decimal digits, so at least two decimal digits for precise measurements, okay? So that's it. And the next, after uh, weighing your samples, you have to uh, arrange the sieves from larger to finer size. By the way, you also have to weigh your uh, individual sieves to get the weight of each uh, sieve before weighing your sample or before even now uh, doing the sieving process okay so arrange the sieves from larger to finer size so this is the usual arrangement of uh, sieves the large uh, larger um, mesh or larger holes are at the top and then as you go down you'll have the finer and finer hole diameters okay and then the recommended again uh, recommended um, arrangement of these sieves is you have a uh, the upper sieve should have a one half larger hole diameter than the lower uh, sieve okay so for example if your if your um, soil sample is dominantly gravel so you have number four you can have an arrangement like uh, this one of four then you have eight you can have 16 16 the next one is uh, 30 so you can have 30 others add uh, 30 others add either 50 or 16 so we have 50 that's fine so 50 and then the next one is uh, 100, and then you have 200, and lastly, we have the pan. Okay, so the pan is where your fines accumulate. So we have the pan right here. Now, so uh, also shown in this uh, picture, the last the container is your pan. So where the fines are accumulated and um, gathered. Okay, so this is uh, the usual arrangement. So you have to, so that um, you have to follow so that your uh, particle size distribution curve later will be uh, well distributed okay so again the number or the designations of these uh, sieves corresponds to specific hole diameter in your mesh okay so this one is called a mesh it's uh, wires arranged uh, perpendicular to one another to have square holes where your uh, soil samples your, your soil portions or fractions are screened or filtered okay so after arranging your sieves, you can do now is to sieve the sieves manually or or you can shake the shake manually or using a mechanical shaker. So I think the right word here is to shake manually. 
We're using a mechanical shaker. So mechanical shaker looks like this. So it's an electrical device that you have to turn on and then the, the sieves are held in these uh, rods and then the device will shake this for at least 10 minutes or more depending on the um, status of your um, soil sample. If it's needed to be shaken more or more than 10 minutes then you have to shake the sieves again or, or, or more than, for more than 10 minutes. If, if you have if you don't have this mechanical shaker you can hold this together your sieves and then you can shake it manually for at least 10 minutes okay so after sieving or shaking your sieves some of the soil particles will be retained here so larger than 4 or larger than 4.75 mm will be retained here and then so on and so forth now for particles larger than 2.36 mm they will be retained on the second sieve and then you have you have to tabulate and so tabulate your data so for data tabulation this is a sample of the tabulation you can put the sieve number sieve opening this one is the weight of sieve like i mentioned earlier you have to measure your individual sieves measure the weight of the individual sieves in grams and the record and then record your um, the weight of the sieves and then after shaking after this one after um, after your step four, shaking the sieves, you will measure the weight of the soil plus the weight of the sieve, okay? So that's uh, bracket B, bracket A. These are just symbols I've, I've placed to uh, represent these uh, parameters, okay? So you just have to measure this. You weigh, you weigh the sieve with the soil that's retained on the sieve. And next is the weight of the retained, so how much um, soil is retained at a specific number of uh, a specific sieve so for example at sieve number four uh, what you do is just to calculate c so c is just equivalent to that's uh, b or the weight of the sieve plus soil minus your weight of the um, sieve okay so this is uh, this is the equation on getting the weight of the retained so for example if you want to get the um, weight of retain at number four so you just have to subtract the recorded data on sieve number four and etc etc okay and the next one is the percent retained so how much um, of the soil sample is retained at a specific uh, sieve number so what you do here is just um, calculate the percentage so weight retained this is a c so this one is d is just equivalent to C divided by your oops divided by your total weight times 100 percent okay so if you want to determine how much is uh, <coughs> retained in terms of percentage at sieve number four so you just have to uh, divide the weight at number four the weight retained at number four divided by the total weight times 100 percent okay and then for percent passing which is uh, the most important column because this is where our distribution curve will be based so e is just uh, computed as the difference the difference between the total weight and your weight retained c divided by the total weight times 100 percent so e describes the portion of um, soil sample that passed through number four for example so if you want to compute for the percent passing or percent finer by the way percent passing is also uh, called as uh, percent finer so we have e for number four c which is equal to w total weight of the soil sample c of number four divided by w times 100 percent so e4 just means that um, a certain percentage of the soil sample passed through your number four sieve so for example if you have 10% um, for this answer you you, you got 10% uh, just for an example so equivalent to 10% therefore it means that 10% of your soil sample passed through your number 4 sieve so that's it now for the tabulated data next one if you're if you're able to accomplish this you are able to populate everything in this table what you do next is to construct this uh, step number six construct the particle size distribution curve so the particle size distribution curve is just the 
curve um, of the percent finer or the percent passing versus your particle size in millimeter scale. Take note that the curve is actually created on a semi-log scale. So semi-log scale is um, it's a combination of um, a normal scale and a logarithmic scale. So if you can observe here, the x-axis is actually plotted on a logarithmic scale. So the lines here are not actually the same with the lines in the x-axis. Now the graduation of the x-axis is not the same with the y-axis. Okay, so it's a semi-logarithmic semi scale. So um, what's important here in the particle size distribution curve is to determine the uh, coefficient of uniformity or the CU. Then you have the coefficient of um, curvature and then you have the D10. Okay, so what's what's uh, D10? D10 is the effective particle size. And how do we get the D10 from our curve? So we just have to get a line, draw a line from the 10, so 10% 10 finer. So you have draw a line from the 10 and then connect it with the diameter here. So this means that um, for D10, it's actually 10% of um, your soil pa is, is finer than a 0.3 for example. So estimate this one is, uh, I think this one is uh, 0 0.029 for example. So D10 in this uh, chart here means that 10% of your soil sample is finer than 0 0.029 millimeters. Okay? So that's uh, the meaning of D10. So the equation for CU or uh, uniformity coefficient is um, D60, D60 over D10, okay? So you just have to find D60. So D60, you just have to draw a line at 60% finer and then connect to the diameter. So I think it's um, around 0 0.78. So 0.7 is at the middle. So maybe 0.78 or 0.77. So that's uh, D60. So meaning that 60% uh, of your soil sample is finer than 0.78 millimeters. And then we have the coefficient of curvature. You have D30 squared divided by D60 times D10. D10, okay? So I think you now have that D10, D60. You just have to find D. 30. So D30 is somewhere here. It's just an estimate, no? So I just have to redo this one because it's a it's erroneous. And uh, D30 is somewhere 0. Point, this is 0. 0.15, so 0. 0.13. Oh no, 0. 0.13 is like that. Okay. So that's uh, 0. 0.13. So the D30 just means that 30% of your sample is finer than 0.13 millimeters. Now what's the significance of this uh, CU and CC? Uh, for values of CU, that's uh, uh, in the range of 4 to 6, your soil sample is said to be well graded. And if you have less than 4, less than 4.0, for CU, you have a uniformly graded or poorly graded soil. Okay. Poorly graded, graded soil sample. Okay, that's for CU. So it will help you identify or determine how well graded your soil sample is. For CC, value is uh, one to three for well graded, well graded well graded soil and uh, the, the lower the lower the number the poor uh, the more poorly graded is your soil sample okay so for single sized single sized um, soil sample meaning you have a uniformly graded um, soil sample the value of cu and c1 is closer to 1.0 this means that d60 is actually not that different with the diameter of 10% uh, passing or 10% finer or this one. So these uh, values are almost the same. That's why the, the values here are closer to 
zero for single sized soil sample okay so i think that's it for uh, this uh, video and i hope uh, everything is clear enough and I, I hope that you understood our discussion so for comments and suggestions if you have questions in this uh, video don't forget or don't hesitate to write in the comment section and we will uh, go over your comments and suggestions if we have the chance to uh, address them okay so i think that's it for this video thank you again for watching and see you on our next video lecture thank you